الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا واسودنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى اله الطيبين وعلى صحابته اجمعين وعلى كل من تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين وقد قال تعالى في محكم التنزيل بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون وقال تعالى في مقام اخر شهر رمضان الذي انزل فيه القران هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم شهر فليصوم وبعد before beginning the topic of discussion today i would like to first express my gratitude appreciation thanks to the people of Ireland especially the people of Dublin and further on the likes of our respected Dr Muhammad Tawfiq Sahib our brother Shihab Dr Israr Dr Kamar Abbasi and all the silent soldiers behind who welcomed me and who showed their love and appreciation to me and also brother Mujahid another person we cannot forget all these people and all the people here and all the people of the island allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you immensely allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and your families inshallah amen the title on the posters which you've all seen the orange and black posters it says ramadan fasting or feasting ramadan fasting or feasting in our dawa community center it'll be ramadan fasting and feasting inshallah because every day in our dawa community center there'll be food at iftar time so there'll be ramadan fasting and feasting inshallah so inshallah but anyway to the topic of today during the course of the year we have sales we have crazies there are seasons in the in the year so comes christmas there's a christmas sales there's a craze in the environment every person is dashing and darting and running towards the shopping centers why because you can gain something in these days which you cannot gain during the whole year a person he has his belief and conviction if i go to the shops today it's christmas sale it's the boxing day sale i'll be able to gain such a bargain today i will not be able to gain this bargain during the whole year he runs to the shops 5 o'clock in the morning 6 o'clock in the morning waiting out in the cold why he wants to save a couple of pounds a couple of euros He wants to gain something in this time he cannot gain during the whole year. Comes the new year. Again, he runs, he has 60% off, 70% off, 80% off. He jumps, his hair stands on end, he, he jumps on his feet and runs to the shopping center. Why? He will gain something. I will gain a bargain. Maybe I'll get a jacket, a nice pair of shoes, or I want to buy a freeze or a sofa. I will get a good bargain today. So he runs to the shopping centers. likewise my respected brothers just as we have these seasons in the world just as we have crazies in the world we have the bargains and sales in the world we have a sale season in islam there's a season in islam where there's bargains upon bargains the the mall and market of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens once a year such a time is dawning upon us my friends and my elders such a time is dawning upon us where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a season of sales has opened up a tsunami of mercy is about to hit us a gale of mercy is about to hit us an eruption of mercy is about to explode we are about to be hit with mercy upon mercy ramadan is approaching the month of ramadan such a month a person can gain in this one month which he cannot gain during the whole year what a person can gain in these 30 days the whole year he cannot gain the bargain in this month the the sale in this month the offers in this month are such my respect to brothers by allah a person can gain so much in these 30 days he can get the closest of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he can get the friendship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he can gain the proximity with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he can become the one to practice upon the sunnah of the messenger of allah if he spends this ramadan correctly the messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a hadith idha dakhala ramadan futihat abwabul jannah 
وغلقت أبواب جهنم وسلسلت الشياطين رواه البخاري إمام بخاري إن الصحيح إن الجامع الصحيح He narrates this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, إِذَا دَخَلَ رَمَضَانَ When the sun of Sha'ban sets and Ramadan dawns upon us, Sha'ban sets, Ramadan dawns upon us, إِذَا دَخَلَ رَمَضَانَ فُتِّهَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ The doors and the gates of paradise are flung open. Paradise, the gates are flung open. The mercy, the serenity, the peace, the blessings, the tranquility from paradise is beamed and shot at the earth. We are being sh- showered with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As soon as Ramadan begins, the mercy of Allah begins to flow in the world like a wind, like a gale. The mercy of Allah from, flows from east to west. The gates of hellfire are closed and sealed shut. All this arguing we see in this world, the disputes, argumentation, fighting, quarrel, the conflicts, all this is eased in the month of Ramadan. You will see the rancor, the malice, we fell for one another. Ramadan comes, our hearts become clean, we become soft, closer to one another. Why? Because the hellfire has been shut. Allah orders, as soon as Ramadan happens, Allah orders in the heavens, O oh my angels, Shackle, fetter and chain every single devil. All the devils, they are shackled, they are chained, they are fettered. Allah is saying to us, O oh my slaves, for 11 months the shayateen, the devils have been making you oblivious of my remembrance. The shayateen have been ambushing you. The shayateen, the devils, they have been stopping you, they have been hindering you, they have been obstru- obstructing you from my, from my dhikr, from my salawat. O oh my slaves, I am chaining the shayateen, I am stopping the shayateen, so you can come close to me. O oh my servants, for 11 months you are away from me, for 11 months you are disobeying me, for 11 months you are wandering from here to there, for 11 months you are away from my houses, for 11 months you are away from my remembrance. O oh my servants, O oh my slaves, I am doing such a favor upon you today, I am doing such a boon upon you today, I am fettering, chaining, shackling every single devil. O oh my servants, you can come to me, O oh my servants. You can prostrate in front of me. O oh my servants, I am facilitating this month for you. I am showering my mercy upon you. I am fettering the devils for you. O oh my servants, come to the masajid. Come to the masajid. Fast all day for me. Prostrate during the night for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling us in this month. Allah wants us, my respected brothers. Allah is making it such for us. It makes it easy for us to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan. Why is Ramadan called Ramadan? Has this question ever crossed our minds? Why is Ramadan called Ramadan? The word Ramadan comes from the letters Ra, Mi, and Dal in the Arabic language. Ramida Yarmadu. This means to burn. That's why scorching sand, the desert sand, is known as a Ramza in Arabic. Ramza. That's why we call it in Arabic. Ramadan is called Ramadan because just as a scorching sun burns a person's feet when he walks upon the sun, a person when he walks on sun, hot boiling sun, then his feet are burnt. Likewise, Mullah Ali Al Qari writes in Mirqatul Mafatih, لِأَنَّهُ تَحْتَرِقُ بِهِ الظُّنُوبُ وَتُمْحَى بِهِ الْعُيُوبُ He writes, Ramadan is called Ramadan because just as a person's feet are burnt, whilst walking in the sun. Similarly, when a person enters the gates of Ramadan, when he walks upon the deserts of Ramadan, when he enters the 30 days of Ramadan, تَحْتَرِقُ بِهِ ذُنُوبِ All his sins are burnt away. We are entering a furnace where Allah purifies us. So Ramadan is a furnace. Ramadan means to burn. The Ramadan burns all our sins away. The moment Ramadan comes, Allah's mercy showers upon us. All our sins are burnt away. This is why Ramadan is called Ramadan. Another question. Many of us, we complain, we say, Ramadan in the summer, summer months is very difficult. At times, 20 hours of fasting. 20 hours of fasting. We find it hard. We come home from work. We go to sleep till the Asr Salah. We feel hungry. We look at the kitchen. We can smell the food. We can smell the burgers, the chips for the youngsters. We can smell the biryanis and the aknis and all the different dishes. And our stomachs begin to rumble. Sometimes the fast is for 10, 10 hours only. Sometimes it's in the sweltering heat. Sometimes it's in the bitter cold. Why is Ramadan 
And especially why has Islam based the months on the lunar calendar and not on the solar calendar? The solar calendar, as you all know, is how many days? 365 days. And the lunar calendar is 10 days less. So therefore, the lunar calendar, it circulates across the whole year. It travels the whole solar calendar. So every year, the lunar calendar will go 10 days back. So last year, Ramadan was on the 30th of July. This year, it can be on the 20th of July. It goes 10 days back every single year. Now the wisdom of this, the benefit of this, the secret behind this is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He likes to see His servants fasting the sweltering heat for 20 hours and say, Alhamdulillah. A time comes when His servants are fasting in the spring and His downpour is taking place. The servant is still saying, Alhamdulillah. A time comes, it's bitter cold, it's freezing. He's wearing two, three layers of clothing. He's wearing two, three layers of socks. The servant is still saying, Alhamdulillah. Every single condition a person travels through, he's saying, Alhamdulillah. Allah wants to see His slaves, my respected friends. Allah wants to see His slaves in the cold saying Alhamdulillah, in the heat saying Alhamdulillah, in the thickness of rain saying Alhamdulillah, when the sun is boiling down, scorching and burning a slavery saying Alhamdulillah, every situation, whether he's hungry, whether he's full, whether he's starving, whether he has nothing, every single situation, that when the servant says Alhamdulillah, this pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, therefore Ramadan has been based on the lunar calendar. So he rotates and a person sees, Allah sees that his slave is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single second. It comes in another hadith, a messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, كُلُّ عَمَلِ بْنِ آدَمَ يُضَعَفْ أَلْحَسِنَةُ بِأَشَّةِ أَمْثَالِهَا إِلَىٰ سَبْعِمِيَةِ ضَعْفٍ قَالَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الصَّوْمْ فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجَزِي بِهِ رَوَاهُ مُسْلِمْ Imam Muslim narrates in his sahih, this beautiful hadith, Every action, يضعف, every action is multiplied. Al-hasanatu bi ashati amthaliha ila sab'imiyati dhaifin. One deed is multiplied from 10 times to 700 times. For example, when we say subhanallah once, a tree grows for us in paradise. Every time a person says subhanallah, one tree grows in paradise. Everybody say subhanallah. Subhanallah. Now everybody in their paradise one tree has grown, a tree, the branches of gold and of silver, the leaves, beautiful leaves, big leaves, beautiful fruits. Every time a person takes a bite, 70 different flavors. So the tree has grown for every single person right now. So for some deeds, you get one, one reward. If a person says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says Salawat upon the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gets 10 rewards. If a person spends one euro in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives one euro in charity, or to a, to a masjid, or to any good cause, he gets 700 good deeds. But Allah says, إِلَّا فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجَزِي بِهِ Every action has a price tag. Every action has a digit. Every action, you get some tangible reward in return. In compensation, you get something tangible. Every action you get something. So for salah in jama'ah you get 27 rewards. For one subhanallah, one tree is planted in paradise. When he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a person is rewarded with 10 good deeds. Illa sawm. There is one action, one deed. For that action, no digits can equate and compensate. No number can compensate for the reward. No tangible item can be given in lieu of this reward and of this action. What is that action? What is that deed which Allah says nothing, nothing can equate, nothing can equate to the reward? Illa sawm fa inna huli wa anajazi bihi. Allah says fasting, only fasting that is for me. Wa ana ajizibi. I alone will give the reward. Allah is saying nothing. Seven hundred is not enough. One million is not enough. I alone will give. My servant reward. Why? يَدْعُوا طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ مِنْ أَجْلِي My servant, he leaves his eating and his drinking for my sake. Allah gives us such reward. In another hadith, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he says, in Tabrani, عَلَى مَا he says, وَرِجَالُهُ ثِقَاتِ Authentic narrators. He says, لَوْ أَنَّ رَجُلًا صَامَ يَوْمًا تَطَوَّنْ ثُمَّ أُعْطِيَ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ ذَهْبًا لَمْ يَسْتَوْفِ ثَوَابَهُ If one person 
If he was to fast for one day, a voluntary fast, one fast, 10 hours, 20 hours. He fasts for one day, then as a reward, he's given He's given the whole world as gold. It will not be equivalent to the reward he gets. A whole world of gold. Imagine, 100 million grams of gold, a trillion grams of gold. A person, he owns every single bank and gold reserve in this world. Even then, a person when he fasts, he gets more reward for the fast than having the whole world as gold. Imagine how much, and this is a voluntary fast. It's not an obligatory fast. A voluntary fast, if a person keeps, is given the whole more than the whole world of gold. That's how much reward we get. Imagine how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, how kind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, how loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Once a companion of the Messenger of Allah, he comes to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the beautiful and the, the auspicious gathering of the Messenger of Allah, and he asks him, Murni bi amalin, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, tell me of an action that I can do, something outstanding, something beyond the norm, something which people don't know, something which will give me so much reward. Tell me an action. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alayka bi sawm, fa innahu la idla lahu. O my companion, alayka bi sawm, hold steadfast onto fasting. Keep fasting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِنَّهُ لَا عِدْلَ لَهُ There is nothing like fasting. He asks again, he thinks fasting is a normal action which we all do. Every, every other day they would fast. Ya Rasulullah, مُرْنِي بِعَمَلٍ A second time he asks the Messenger of Allah, tell me of an action. مُرْنِي بِعَمَلٍ The Messenger of Allah again says to him, عَلَيْكَ بِالصَّوْمْ فَإِنَّهُ لَا عِدْلَ لَهُ O my companion, hold steadfast onto fasting, for there is no action equivalent to it. Again the companion says, Ya Rasulullah, Murni bi amalin. Tell me an action. Tell me an action. That I can do something outstanding, something beyond the norm. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, says to him, Alayka bi sawm fa inna hu la idla lahu. O my companion, hold firm unto fasting, for there is nothing like it. Fasting is a worship. Fasting is ibadah. The moment suhoor takes place, the moment we begin fasting, Every single second we are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The slave of Allah, he walks home, he can smell the food, he controls his desires and walks away from the kitchen and he says to himself, I am fasting for the sake of Allah. The heat is burning him, his mouth is getting dry, yet he's saying, I am fasting for the sake of Allah. He stays away from the water, he stays away from the drink for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's, he feels like doing eating, he feels like fulfilling his, his desires, he feels like doing things, but yet he restrains himself. He controls himself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every time the thought of food crosses his mind, he says to himself, Allah is watching me. How can I eat? Kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. The whole gist and the essence of Ramadan is this training to make us understand Ramadan is taqwa. Ramadan is today in taqwa, his consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is watching me. When I am walking in school, I cannot, I cannot look at something I'm not supposed to look at. Let me control my gaze. When I'm going to work, let me stay away from the haram. Let me stay away from the evil sounds of music. Let me stay away, stay away from the women. Let me stay away from the intoxicants. Let me stay away from the interest. Let me stay away from gambling. This Ramadan is to train us every single, de- every single evil and vice we need to stay away from. This Ramadan. Let us train ourselves. Whichever vice comes to us, in front of us, we will stay away from this vice. We fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are scared of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want genital firdos. Ramadan is for training, my brothers. We need to train ourselves, exercise, and work on our nafs. Control the self. We want to become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Messenger of Allah says in another hadith, Imam Tabrani reports this in his Al-Mu'jam al awsat Imam Haytham, he says, Rijaluhu thiqat, the narrators are authentic. Sumu tasihu. A beautiful hadith. Sumu tasihu. Oh, my companions, fast and you will get better in your health. You will become healthier. Fast and you will become healthier. Sumu tasihu. This is the hadith of the Messenger of Allah in Tabarani. 
We know if you Google this, Google the effects of overeating. Google the effects of overeating and you'll see. A person who overeats, he's struck with diabetes. We have many doctors amongst us, they can tell you. He's struck with diabetes and hypertension, high cholesterol. All his illnesses and sicknesses come due to overindulgence in food, overeating. The Messenger of Allah told us 1433-34 years ago, Sumu tasihu. Oh my companions, fast. Don't overindulge in eating. Don't eat excessively. Control your eating. Fast some time to time. Tasihu. You'll become healthy. You don't need to go to the doctor every other day. Control yourself. Fast a couple of days. Fast Mondays and Thursdays are Sunnah, the Masun fasting. Fast three days a month, the Ayyamul Beed. Fast these months, the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th of the lunar calendar. And this will gain you gain, you'll gain benefit and you'll become healthy, inshaAllah. Another hadith, a messenger of Allah, a beautiful hadith, he says, As-siyamu junna wa hisnun hasinu min al-nar. Fasting is a shield. Wa hisnun hasinu min al-nar. Fasting isn't merely staying hunger, my friends. When a person fasts, perpetually he's, he's worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this fast will turn into a shield on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment where every person is crying and screaming and wailing, every person, يَوْمَ يَفِرُ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِي وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِي وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِي لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ شَأْنٌ يُغْنِي وَجُوهٍ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ مُسْفِرَةٌ وَضَاحِكَةٌ مُسْتَبْشِرَةٌ وَوَجُوهٍ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَلَيْهَا غَبَرَةٌ تَرْحَقُهَا قَطَرَ what a scene Allah has put in front of us. The day of judgment. Husband will be running away from the wife. The wife will be running away from the husband. The father will be running away from the children. The children will be running away from the father. The brothers will be running away from one another. Nafsi, nafsi. Every person will be concerned with his own self. He'll be saying, Every person will have his own worry, his own concern. He'll be running away. Leave me alone. Don't come to me. Don't talk to me. I have my own affairs to deal with. I've got a reckoning in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He'll tell everybody, go away from me. Go away from me. He'll be thinking, who can save me? Who can protect me from the, the torment of Allah? The punishment of Allah? As-siyamu junna wa hisnun hasinu min al-nar. This fast you kept in the summer months, this fast you kept in the sweltering heat, in the scorching heat, this will come as a shield for you. When every person will leave you, my friends, when every person will forget you, this fast will not forget you. This fast will be remembering you. On the day of judgment, this fast will come as a shield and will protect you from the azab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As-siyam hisnun hasinu min al-nar. In another hadith, the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Imam Ahmad reports in his Musnad, الصيام والقرآن يشفعان للعبد يوم القيامة يقول الصيام أي ربي منعته الطعام والشهوة فشفعني فيه الصيام will say Imam Ahmad reports the hadith of the messenger of Allah the Quran and fasting these two things will intercede on behalf of a person on the day of judgment but when you're worried and you're drowning in your own worries and concerns on the day of judgment every person thinking about himself Siyam, the fasting and Quran will come in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will say to Allah, O oh Allah, I we intercede on the behalf of this person, forgive this person. O oh Allah, forgive this person, we overlook his faults. O oh Allah, we are asking you, the fasting will say, O oh Allah, because of me, this servant didn't eat any food. Because of me, this servant stayed away from drinking. Because of me, this servant stayed away from eating. O oh Allah, forgive him. And Allah will accept the intercession of the fast. This is the value of one fast, my respected brothers. Ramadan. Ramadan is like gathering provisions. Ramadan is a time to gather provisions. If a person is traveling through a desert, before he leaves, if he's tra- 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 trespassing or if he's walking along the Sahara Desert, a person, what will he do? He'll gather as much as food and water as he can to get him through his journey and for him to reach his destination safely. Likewise, every year, every month we are traveling. From one Ramadan, we are traveling to another Ramadan. We are going through the deserts of the year. Every year, every month we are traveling. So one Ramadan is a time to gather your provisions. Stock up, pile your stocks. Remember Allah so much as you can. Recite as much as Quran as you can. The more provisions you make in this month, the easier your 11 months will go to the next Ramadan. Ramadan is like a, one Ramadan to another Ramadan. It's a journey. As much as you can do, stay away from all evils and gather and stock up good deeds which will help you and aid you during the course of the year. Ramadan is like a hospital. 
like a hospital. A person has been suffering for 11 months, no medication. Imagine a person, he has a disease, a sickness, an illness. For 11 months, he hasn't been given any medication. He's suffering for 11 months. All of a sudden, somebody comes and gives him all the medication or somebody comes and takes him into a hospital and he gets 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, remedy and uh, supervision. Now, how will a person feel? How will he improve in his health? And how, what effect and difference will he make in his life? Likewise, Ramadan, for 11 months, we have been outside of the spiritual hospital. We've been wandering around. We need rem- remedies and medication. Allah is giving us a spiritual hospital in Ramadan. He is giving us all the medication we need, all the illnesses, all the wrongs, all the evils in this month, Allah is giving to us. All, all the evils are being moved away from us. All the medicine, all the medication, Allah is providing for free in this month. Ramadan is like a person who hasn't been given food for 11 months. Or he's been eating bread and water. He's been eating bread and drinking water for 11 months. Comes one month and he's given all the beautiful dishes. So he's given biryani and acne and burgers and chips and pizza. Now how will this person eat? He'll eat with two hands. And he'll keep eating. And he'll keep drinking. And he'll burp away and eat away. Why? For 11 months he hasn't seen his food. For 11 months he's just been eating bread and water. He'll eat as much as he can. Whatever is put in front of him, he'll take a bite. He'll not go off any dish. Every dish he'll put his hand inside that dish and begin to eat. Why? For 11 months he's been starving. He hasn't seen this for 11 months. Likewise, my beloved brothers, for 11 months we have been starving and we have been deprived from the cuisine of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have been deprived from the tablecloth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mercy of Allah. Ramadan is a month where Allah lays His tablecloth in front of us. Oh my servants, there's this action for you, there's this deed for you, there's this amal for you. Oh my servants, recite Quran, take some Quran, recite Salah, take some Salah. Oh my servants, recite Salawat upon the Messenger of Allah, you recite Salawat upon the Messenger of Allah. Allah puts His tablecloth, we need to indulge, take from this action, take from this action, take from this action. Every single action is so, so beneficial, so beneficial. Do not go off any single action. How do we spend Ramadan? That's the question. How do we spend our Ramadan? First of all, we all make an intention. Not one salah. We do not miss one salah in the masjid. Every single salah, every single salah we perform in the masjid. Every single salah in the masjid, five times a day. We make this new intention now that every salah I'll perform in the masjid. Inshallah. <coughs> Second, as much as Quran as we can recite, Quran upon Quran, in Hilatul Awliya is written Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah wa anhu, a great scholar of Islam, Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah, the famous jurist. He would complete 60 recitations of the Quran in the month of Ramadan. 60 recitations of the Holy Quran in the month of Ramadan. This is recorded in Hilyatul Awliya. So imagine 60 recitations. That means during the day, every day it complete two recitations of the Quran. And we cannot even complete one recitation in the month of Ramadan. Look at the difference between us and them. That's why these Jewish and great people, they reached those stations which they reached. And they reached those high, high standards and elevated themselves to lofty stations and ranks. Because they were immersed and engrossed in the recitation of the Holy Quran in the month of Ramadan. The Ramadan is synonymous to the Quran. Ramadan, Shahru Ramadan, Alladhi Unzila Fi Al Quran. It is the month of the Quran. So, as much as we can, we take our time, make a timetable for ourselves to recite the Quran. That's the second action. Third action stay away from all evils and sins. You're walking to, you're walking to the town center. Anything you see which you're not supposed to see, or anything you hear which you're not supposed to hear, you turn away. Turn away from that thing. Turn away from the haram. And you say to yourself, Oh Allah, I am fasting for your sake. Oh Allah, this Ramadan I am making for you. I am staying away from the evil. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stay away from all sins. That's the third action. The first action was, perform our salawat in the masjid five times a day. Second, recite the Quran perpetually as much as you can. Third, stay away from all sins. And fourthly, constant dua. The fasting person's dua is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So constantly, before salah, after salah, keep making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Ask Allah of His bounties. Ask Allah of His blessings, of His favors. Every need you have, ask Allah. Allah's treasures are unlimited. You can ask Allah. Sit from the morning till the evening. Keep asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such is the treasures of Allah. Such is the might of Allah. Such is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah can give and keep giving and keep giving. By Allah, Allah's treasures will never come to an end. Ask Him from everything and anything permissible. Allah will give to you. Allah will give to you. Open your hands, raise your hands in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and start asking one by one. Make a list of everything you want. You want good grades in your exams. You want something good in your jobs. You want something in domestic life. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Learn to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a month to recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is Allah? Allah is our nourisher our cherisher, our sustainer, our creator. Allah is the one who has created every single thing we see around us. Our most beautiful Allah, our beloved Allah. These green trees that we see, Allah has created the trees. These blue oceans we see, Allah has created. Allah has created the golden red sun. Allah has created the Grand Canyon in America, the red Grand Canyon. Allah has created the white deserts. Allah has created the white clouds, the blue sky. Look at how many colors Allah has created. Everything has a different color, a different texture, a different design. Some you'll see how beautiful the leaves are, how beautiful the flies are, how beautiful animals are. Every animal, the snakes you'll see, how beautiful. You'll see the, the snake skin. Some have their own designs, symmetrical designs. Butterflies, how beautiful. How beautiful are butterflies. Allah has created every single thing. This is who Allah is. Ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to, this is a month, my respected friends, let us make this firm resolution. In this month, I want to connect myself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the month to change. For 50 years, for 40 years, for 30 years, for 20 years. Oh Allah, we have been away from you. For 30 years, for 40 years. Oh Allah, we haven't been in the masajid. Oh Allah, we have been deprived from prostrating in front of you. Oh Allah, this time, this month, this is the time now. I'm changing my life. I'm changing my life. Allah, I'm turning to you. Allah, I do not want to commit any more sin. How many more months will I stay away from you, O oh Allah? O oh Allah, this is the month I want to come to you. O oh Allah, for 30 years of my life, I have been away from your remembrance. Let us say to ourselves, O oh Allah, this is the month I'm coming back to you. O oh Allah, I repent to you for every single thing I've done. O oh Allah, you are so, so beautiful, so kind, so loving, so merciful. O oh Allah, make us your slaves. This should be the plea from our hearts. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives me the ability and the recognition of this month of Ramadan and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He blesses you all with the recognition, with the ability to practice on the talk and also to gain maximum benefit from Ramadan Ameen wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim al-Iflami wa Allahu la ilaha illa wa al-Hayu al-Qayyum la ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-Zalimin ya ahad al-Samad al-Ladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufun ahad ya hiyu ya qayyum bi rahmatika astaghith aslih lana shakna kullah wa la takilna ila anfasina tarfata'in Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim O oh Allah, O oh most beautiful Allah, O oh most kind Allah, O oh most loving Allah, O oh most beautiful Allah, O oh our Allah. Every single month, O oh Allah, we have disobeyed you, O oh Allah. For 11 months, O oh Allah, we have disobeyed you, O oh Allah. For 11 months, we have been away from your remembrance, O oh Allah. For every single second of our lives, O oh Allah, we have been disobeying you, O oh Allah. O oh our beautiful Allah, you have, we have been looking at things which we haven't been supposed to look at. O oh Allah, we have, we've been listening to music which we're not supposed to listen to, O oh Allah. But not one second you've taken away our hearing, O oh Allah. You haven't taken our eyesight away from us, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, these feet of ours have gone to every single rung, O oh Allah. But O oh Allah, you are so kind. You are so loving, O oh Allah. You are so beautiful, Allah. You are so merciful, Ya Allah. You haven't taken our feet away from us. O oh Allah, these hands of ours, they're not worthy of being raised to you, O oh Allah. O oh Allah, these hands of ours have committed so many wrongs, O oh Allah. Yet, O oh Allah, you have not snatched away our hands from us, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, our whole body, Allah, every single hair on our body, Ya Allah, has been immersed in in disobeying you, Ya Allah. Every strand of hair, Allah, has been immersed in disobeying you, Ya Allah. Allah, 
not one second have you remembered your Allah. Not one second have you come to your Allah. Oh Allah, we have disobeyed you every moment of our lives, Allah. Allah, we've done so much wrong, oh Allah. We have disobeyed you every single second, ya Allah. But oh Allah, you've never snatched away any blessing from us, Allah. Oh Allah, you are so kind, Allah. Allah, you are so merciful, Allah. You are so beloved, ya Allah. You are so merciful, Allah. Oh Allah, forgive all our sins, Allah. Allah, forgive all our sins, Allah. Allah, we are drowning in the ocean of sin, Allah. Allah, we are drowning in the ocean of sin, Allah. Allah, there's nobody to save us, Allah. There's nobody to turn to Allah. There's nobody to help us, Allah. Oh Allah, we have no door to go to Allah. There's no king besides you, Allah. There's no door besides your door, Allah. Allah, we knock on your door, Allah. We are knocking on your door, Allah. We are beggars, oh Allah. We are beggars of Allah. Allah, if a beggar goes to a rich person and he knocks on his door, the, the rich person, he gives the beggar something. Oh Allah, we are beggars. You are the richest of the rich. Oh Allah, you are the richest of the rich. We are knocking on your door, Allah. Oh Allah, answer us, Allah. Open your door to us, Allah. Allah, forgive us, Allah. Allah, open your door to us, Allah. We pour our begging bowls in front of you, Allah. Our empty bowls, Allah, we put in front of you, Allah. Allah, fill our empty bowls, Allah, with your bounties and blessings, Allah. Allah, forgive all our sins, Allah. Allah, every second of our lives, you have disobeyed you, Allah. Allah, forgive us, Allah. Rahamka ma'amla farma, ya Allah. Allah, forgive us, Allah. Allah, forgive us, Allah. Afu inaidka ma'amla farma, ya Allah. Allah, forgive all our sins, Allah. Every single second of our lives, Allah, we've been away from you, Allah. Allah, we make a firm resolution now, Allah. Now, once will we disobey you, Allah? How can we disobey you, Allah? You are so kind to us, Allah. You are so merciful to us, Allah. You are so loving to us, Ya Allah. You have given us everything, Ya Allah. People in the world are suffering from hunger, from starvation. They have no water, oh Allah. People are dying in the deserts, oh Allah. You have given us so much water, Allah. So much food, Allah. So much clothing, Allah. Allah, forgive all our sins, Allah. Allah, for all our ingratitude, Allah, forgive all of us, Allah. Allah, forgive all our sins, Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, we turn to you, Allah. Make this month of Ramadan a month of changing our lives, Allah. Change our lives, Allah. What has happened to us, Allah? What has happened to us, Allah? We have turned away from you, Allah. What has happened to us? We have moved away from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh Allah, make our hearts like the hearts of Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Make our heart like his heart, Ya Allah. Make our external like his external, Allah. Oh Allah, what has happened to the Ummah today, Ya Allah? Allah, make us turn back to you, Allah. Allah, give us tawfiq, Ya Allah. Give us ability and guidance, Allah. Allah, forgive us all, Ya Allah. Allah bless the people of Ireland, Ya Allah, with hidayah and guidance, O oh Allah. Allah guide the people of Dublin, Ya Allah. Allah guide the people of Dublin, Ya Allah. Give us all hidayah and guidance, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, give the whole Ummah guidance, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, the Ummah of the Messenger of Allah suffering the world, Ya Allah. The Ummah suffering the world, Ya Allah. Allah, how many people out there are dying daily, Ya Allah. How many Muslims are suffering in the world, Ya Allah. Allah help them, Ya Allah. Allah, there's no one to help them, Ya Allah. Allah, we have no army, nobody, Ya Allah, except you, Allah. We have no one to turn to, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, help our brothers in the world, Ya Allah. All those brothers who are dying daily, who are starving daily, Ya Allah. Fulfill all their needs, Ya Allah. Allah, they are our Muslim brothers, Ya Allah. They said, La ilaha illallah. Oh Allah, they are my brother, Ya Allah. Help my brothers and sisters in the world, Ya Allah. Forgive everybody in the world, Ya Allah. Help the Muslim Ummah in the world today, Ya Allah. Allah, change the condition of the Ummah today, Ya Allah. Allah, please put an end to all this, Ya Allah. We cannot hear it anymore in the news, Ya Allah. It's been too much now, Ya Allah. Allah, how many more days will you see our Muslim brothers dying and starving daily, Ya Allah? How many more days, Ya Allah? How many more days, Ya Allah? Allah, please help the Muslim Ummah in the world, Ya Allah. Allah, the heart of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, must be hurt so much, Ya Allah. Seeing his Ummah daily, Ya Allah, being slaughtered, Ya Allah. The heart of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, Ya Allah, your beloved Messenger, Ya Allah, his Ummah. His Ummah is starving, Ya Allah. His Ummah is unclothed, Ya Allah. His Ummah is thirsty, Ya Allah. Allah, fulfill the needs of the Ummah today, Ya Allah. Allah, in this gathering, Ya Allah, make a decision, Ya Allah. Allah, we knock on your door, Ya Allah, we knock on your door. We are knocking on your door, Ya Allah, please guide the whole Ummah. Help the whole Ummah, Ya Allah, change our situation, Ya Allah. Give us all the brothers in this masjid, all the sisters in this masjid, Ya Allah. Give us all the good in this world in the Akhirah, Ya Allah. 
all the brothers which attended this program, Ya Allah, grant them the best, best in this world and akhirah, Ya Allah. Allah, forgive all our sins, Ya Allah. Our parents, our teachers, our children, our brothers, our sisters, Ya Allah. Those relatives who have passed away, Ya Allah. Forgive all their sins, Ya Allah. We ask you from the bottom of our heart, Ya Allah. Forgive all their sins, Ya Allah. Give them genital fardos, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, I ask you, Allah. I ask you, Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, bless the people of Ireland, Ya Allah. Grant, bless the people of this masjid, Ya Allah. Bless all the brothers and sisters in this masjid, Ya Allah. Please accept our prayer, Ya Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen, ameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad bi rahmatika, Ya Arhamar Rahimin.